here. Um, oh, oh, I just got the recording message. I thought I was on mute. Yeah, okay. So um, I'm very happy to see you all here. Um, first of all, I just want to share um, a Menti question uh, that I would love to get your votes on. How do you feel about online teaching right now? I, I try to choose um, memes that really, or, or GIFs that really capture um, the feeling. So feel free to, to uh, vote uh, while I'm speaking. So actually what I would like to talk about today is hybrid teaching problems and solutions. So as I mentioned, if you saw my little teaser video or the abstract, um, basically, I'm going to talk about or share the case of, a, of the university where I teach in Hungary, Budapest. Um, we um, had to go through a hybrid teaching period, and I would love to share how, we, how that whole thing went and, um, and what I would suggest uh, for future generations and for future pandemics. Hopefully, we, will, we won't have uh, future pandemics, but what if we we choose this hybrid teaching setup in the future. And I can see some votes coming in. Um, I'm very happy actually that nobody feels like the, this lady here um, completely losing her mind and you mostly feel all right and awesome. Um, I'm really, really happy about that. Feel free to vote on this. I'm going to switch the screen now to my slides, but um, feel free to, to share your opinion. And actually this talk is going to be slightly interactive. So I'll be using the chat to gather your opinions from time to time. And so I'm just gonna uh, move on to my slides. Here we go. So, um, yeah, so basically just a little recap of what happened in 2020. You are all aware of the situation we're in, COVID and quarantine teaching. Um, but basically there were lots of very, uh, like lots of different online teaching scenarios and lots of different solutions depending on mostly our self-motivation as teachers and our budget and, and, institutional support if you were lucky enough to have institutional support. So that's that really characterized how we managed to deal with this situation. And before um, I talk about hybrid, I just wanted to show you this little um, graphic or um, design I created about the different teaching scenarios or learning modes that we have. And right now we are doing a synchronous talk, right? So you are all here with me, I'm talking, you listen to me and it's all live, even though it's online. But we could all do this asynchronously that I, as um, there are several talks like that during this uh, Bali event, that there are pre-recorded um, talks that you listen at your own time, where, wherever you want, and then come to even, either you don't go to any session, so then it's completely asynchronous. You don't meet anyone anytime. You just listen to the video. Or it can be um, this flipped, blended sort of thing in the middle. That means you watch something and then you come to a live synchronous discussion. But then, and this is my first question to you, which I would love to uh, see your answers for in the chat where does hybrid go? So I'm really curious about your understanding of hybrid teaching. So what is it? And I'm trying to open the chat. So I would love to see what you think about this. Oh, the Manti code. Yes, here you go, by the way. Um, okay, so what I would, love to see and you can also speak up or write it in what do you think hybrid is oh very good i can see instruction and feedback live but students at home but i also see in person and live at the same time oh, okay blended okay very good this shows me that yeah we need to maybe clear up this uh very good if somebody's confused Okay, that's awesome, um, because this is totally fine if you're confused. We're using now too many terms for this. And the problem is that these ter like this terminology is sometimes mixed up, even in like various sources. So blended, flipped, and hybrid, what are they? 
The main difference is that blended actually means that the course is designed in a way that you, uh, students get asynchronous elements for a while, let's say for a day or for a week, and then they go in to the school, either face-to-face -face or online, and they have a period of that. So it's a period of asynchronous and a period of synchronous separated from each other, while hybrid is putting the two together. So somebody wrote it very well. Hybrid is when some students are in the classroom, face-to-face, -face, physically sitting at a table. I know it sounds very strange to us now. And some students are following the lesson online from home synchronously. So a hybrid teaching situation is when it's synchronous, but some are there physically and some are online. Oh, somebody says that they have done it and it's so cool. I'm very happy that you've got so positive or such positive um, feelings about it. And I'm going to share you what my experience was. It wasn't so positive at first. Now, the thing is, yes, okay, I can make it move. So my university situation, basically, um, we did this hybrid teaching um, period in the fall of 2020. Uh, we started so in a socially distanced way, which meant that um, student numbers had to be reduced in a, in a classroom um, and we had to wear masks. We couldn't have handouts, um, so everybody had to be completely distanced from the rest. Um, and then very, very quickly, in like a week, we had to uh, switch to hybrid because there were a lot of students who had to be or, or who had to stay at home. I'm also involved in the teacher training department. So these teachers had to stay in quarantine, for example. So we lost more and more students um, that created this hybrid teaching period. And then we went fully online at the end of November. I'm going to tell you how we did that. Um, and the thing is, I cannot see my cursor, so I cannot close the chat. So sorry for a moment. I need to stop the share. Uh, now I can see it. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so here we go. Um, I divided the R situation into separate categories. So I was looking at how lecturers, so those who had lectures, dealt with the situation and how teachers dealt with their seminar work. And I also want to tell you what the uh, teachers did with no technological background or support. So basically what they did is they had to completely disregard the online students. Um, they just uploaded the material onto Moodle, um, the virtual learning environment we use at our university. Um, the face-to-face -face students were there. The online students had to self-study. So these teachers, unfortunately, picked the solution that left the online students, uh, that left the, them out completely. Now, there were teachers who had some background and some support. They started to move away from the Moodle uh, universe that we have to use. So they uploaded material onto Google Drive and they live streamed their lecture on Teams, Zoom, or Meet. The seminar teachers um, did something like, it wasn't entirely different. All they did was they sent the online activities to the online students. Um, so if they created a quiz or a game or a matching activity, they send those activities to the online students to be done synchronously. Um, and they pulled the laptop a little closer so that they could be a part of the conversation, but still it was live streaming. Now, those who had lots of tech background, they still didn't do, and what I'm saying here is important, they still didn't do the ideal um, solution because it happened so quickly. So even those who had lots of tech background tried to come up with something techy but still it wasn't the best. But what they did is that um, they used Google Classroom um, and they tried to give differentiated activities. So while face-to-face -face students were discussing something in class, 
real time. The online students had to answer it on Google Classroom um, in, a, in an assignment. That was one way of keeping them synchronous. The other option was that these lecturers include um, recorded asynchronous interactive video lectures. So they canceled the lecture and um, they recorded a video lecture which was shorter but had interactive questions and activities that were included. In the seminar, it was mostly the same. Um, seminar students received flipped videos. That means that they received a, an interactive video in advance. They came to class. And while the face-to-face -face students discussed the material um, in a physical setting, the online students could do it um, either as part of the online um, video chats um, or they could do it in the same way on Google Classroom. And again, the laptop was placed closer so they could take part. I'm not saying that this is not the ideal solution yet. This is what we did and what we managed to do extremely quickly. But what were the problems? We face several problems, and this will be important in connection with how, we, how we're looking at the solutions that can be done in the future. So our technical background was extremely insufficient. We had very, very slow Wi-Fi. Um, there were webcams, but just one webcam, and that they were installed extremely late. Um, the university decided to use Microsoft Teams um, but that was uploaded late. So teachers decided to use Zoom or Google Meet instead. And there were no sufficient speakers or microphones. Also, we didn't really have a consensus on virtual learning environments. Even though we are um, expected to use Moodle, um, a lot of teachers find it not very intuitive, um, very hard to use. So teachers decided to use Google Classroom, Edmodo, Google Drive simply, which was extremely confusing for students. And the final part is that our teachers didn't really have uh, knowledge in these teaching solutions or teaching solutions for hybrid um, teaching. So they didn't know how to make their lessons interactive. So that meant they left out the online students completely. They didn't know how to differentiate. So what kind of tasks can I give to the online students and what can I give to the face-to-face -face students and copyright, which actually, um, yeah, it turned out to be a big problem. How do I share material? Um, what will I do? How can I share a complete book? Can I, can I send a video? What can I send? How can I share? So that caused some issues as well. So, that's why I'm um, now telling you what the institution can do. So possible solutions that, the, that can come from the institutional side. Basically, it would be nice if the institution could provide tech and software for teaching, which means that in the ideal hybrid classroom, it would be nice to have at least two cameras. So one that um, records the class, the other that records the board. In the most ideal solution, there are 360 uh, cameras so that can take in the whole classroom and several are installed in the class. That's a big investment. So actually the, like a nice solution would be to have at least two. And software. So it turned out that, um, for example, for creating interactive videos or flipped videos, um, some websites, for example, Nearpod, which a lot of us use, um, now they are uh, the asynchronous part of Nearpod is not paid anymore. But when we started in 2020, it was still paid. And um, it would have been nice or it would be nice in the future if an institution could uh, buy an, uh, a subscription for such software. Another thing, use one VLE that's preferred by teachers. So we found that it, uh, students really struggled with using several virtual learning environments. Some used Teams, some used Classroom, some used Moodle. 
and there was no consensus. The problem is that Moodle is very, very hard to, like it's, it, it is a very nice uh, platform, but hard to manage. And it would be nice if the university could ask um, staff opinion and choose a VLE that's going to be used throughout the, the whole uh, university and which teachers like. Also set up the classroom with camera speakers and microphones. It's a bit related to the first um, solution that um, they can, um, we need good um, infrastructure. So nice speakers that actually work, um, several microphones. So the ideal hybrid classroom would have microphones in the ceiling um, and also the teacher would have a headset so that the online students could hear the classroom discussion and also the teacher. Um, so I'm, I'm using this one right now, um, but if you have a proper headset, that's also, that's also fine. But the more microphones you have, um, the more included uh, students can feel. And the final thing is provide training for teachers. So, um, it would be a very, very good idea if teachers could receive continual uh, or continuous uh, training and, and know about teaching solutions. And now I'm gonna give you a couple of uh, such teaching solutions, which I also found um, during this period. And um, I wrote several blog posts for um, the Cambridge University Press uh, blog, uh, the teaching ELT blog. And I would like you to just uh, look at a couple of them. Um, and actually, I, as I can see, I messed up the, the order of the images a little bit, but um, again, I would like you to use the chat for sending in some ideas. So um, what do you think these icons mean? What kind of a teaching solution can it be or can they be in connection with? And I would love to see any ideas in the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Very good. So quizzes, polling. Very good. Yeah. Very good. You've got uh, the right ideas. The nice thing will be that because I messed up the order, they will appear in a slightly different way. So actually, um, what's important in these two cases is that. I'm going to show them all at once is what you said. So tip number two is for joint or collaborative work. Use online tools that let everyone interact. And that's a good idea for hybrid teaching situations because you, first of all, you never know who's going to be online or present online or present face to face. So if you're building your lesson around online tools and online collaborative tools, such as Google Docs, which is cloud-based, then uh, you can always have everybody interact and um, they, they won't feel left out. The first tip um, is use shortcomings to your advantage. So it's a kind of, a, a, let's say a hack uh, of using online students for your benefit. The thing is, maybe you know um, from English language teaching um, um, context that there are many inform information gap activities. And um, in that case, some students don't know something while some students are involved. So in this case, you can use this hybrid solution for your benefit, just switch off the online students or turn the micro microphone off you can tell one thing to the face-to-face -face students, which they can then relay or discuss with the online students. So it's a genuine information gap situation. Um, now I'm going to show you another idea. Again, I would love to see in the chat what you think of this image. Let's see. What do you think this image might show? Mm hmm. I'm going to tell you that it basically wants to sh like illustrate screen sharing. So what I would recommend is if you can get an ebook version of your course book, then um, use screen share. 
and use it to involve online students as well. Again, this is where the copyright issue comes in. So whether we can share PDFs or whether we have the actual ebook version of a book that we're using, the textbook, course book, but it's a good way to um, involve online students because they can also highlight, annotate that um, ebook and they can feel a part of the, of the whole process. The next one, and I could see that it, um, I could just quickly see it in the chat, um, many of you are talking about the case in China where Google uh, is, I think, not acceptable or not like not possible to use. Um, I'm a very Google person, so I like Google uh, products very much, but I don't know actually about Microsoft in China, whether that's possible to use, but Microsoft has exactly the same things. So within Teams, you can use a whiteboard and um, there's uh, Microsoft OneNote, uh, which could replace Google Docs. So, uh, oh, Microsoft can be used in China. Very good. Um, so Microsoft products are, can totally replace uh, these Google options. And an online whiteboard can be good because again, everybody can collaborate. And I'm gonna give you some more tips. This is one, don't leave students unsupervised for a long time. Um, we've experienced this, that teachers didn't really know how to share their attention. So how to um, basically differentiate and pay attention to both groups. Should they pay more attention to the online students or to the face-to-face -face students? With the help of these collaborative ideas, which are online, you can actually monitor all of them at the same time. And the thing is that uh, just try to be aware of both groups and don't leave them unsupervised for a very long time. And this sixth tip kind of um, underline, like underpins the whole idea that you basically plan for an online lesson that you carry out offline and not the other way around. Um, if we plan with online things in mind or an online lesson in mind, we can really have everyone collaborate and, and contribute, even if they are um, there face-to-face -face or online. So it's a better idea to plan for an online lesson than the other way around. I'm going to give you another image that you can um, say what you think it is in the chat. What do you think this arrow could mean? And I have actually mentioned this word before. It's all, it was also a kind of teaching. Ooh, uh-huh. I got a very interesting question, which I'm gonna ask later or answer later on. Well, I'm gonna say, ooh, very good. I got a very good answer. Um, flipped, yes. Thank you. Uh, or recycling. We could also actually, it's part of the green movement that, that if we don't use handouts because it's a socially distanced classroom, we are actually um, saving the world. But flipping the material, why can that be, uh, or of activities? Yeah, recycling activities can be a good idea because we, if we plan for online uh, materials, all these online activities can be saved and used later on. And with flipping and flipped materials, we can again involve both teams. And that's the main idea. Sometimes in this case, actually, I knew which of my students are going to be online and which will be there face to face. Uh, but it can happen that things change. Maybe some more students fall out of the face to face group or somebody decides to come in. Because the, the thing of the hybrid classroom is that we don't always have to think about it as a solution for a pandemic. Um, it can be possibly a future solution for other um, situations like there's a tornado somewhere or a big snowstorm or something similar. And then students decide not to come into class so we can have a hybrid um, lesson instead. And if we flip the material, send the actual, um, the content 
in the form of an interactive video in advance, then no matter who comes to the face-to-face -face class or the online lesson, they can still take part in the discussion. And this was, I think somebody asked this question before, whether we can mix the groups. Um, and I would suggest this solution, obviously it depends on class size, but what I have in mind, and I will try it, I have to say that I didn't have the chance to try it in, in 2020, but I would love to do it in, like if we ever have this situation again, is to mix online and face-to-face -face students, but in a way that they use WhatsApp, FaceTime, some or, or whatever chat software they can um, access, and you just put them, so obviously the face-to-face -face situation can be chaotic. So you put them in different corners of the classroom and they have their own separate video chat discussion. So let's say you have two face-to-face -face students with two online students uh, engaging in one video conference and that is a mixed group group work. And it can be done. So um, you just need to take them off the, or take them out of the main video chat and set up smaller groups. They are in charge of their video chat and they can have um, group projects in that way. And the final thing um, for these teaching tips is reflection stages in your lesson. Um, it could be a very, very good idea uh, in general as well to have reflection stages. That means you ask them what they thought of the different activities, uh, what they thought of the lesson, but also this can also be done collaboratively in a, a cloud-based platform that you either ask them to use, again, I'm going to say Google Docs, but I'm going to put in the chat one thing um, that I might show you later on. There's a website called Pear Deck and they create, it's not entirely aimed at EAP or higher education students, but these are beautifully illustrated reflection slides and reflection questions that if you're at a loss and you don't know what to ask, you can use these slides and ask your students what they thought of the lesson, um, give them exit tickets. And it's a very, very good idea for hybrid teaching scenarios to keep, like check how your students are doing, ask them to show up different um, colors or cards or um, numbers to show how confident they feel in connection with the topic that they are listening to. So you can always jump in and help. And again, coming back to the planning for online, if this uh, feedback se segment is online, you can um, continuously monitor what's going on and you can see whether a student changed the color, changed the number, and you can jump in and help them if you see that they, they got stuck at some point. And my final tip, learner autonomy. This is basically the most important part. Obviously, uh, we are, um, if we are teaching higher education students, then learner autonomy is key. But in a hybrid teaching situation, it's even more important because they need to understand that they are responsible for their own learning. They need to uh, pay attention to what's going on. Um, that's why actually one VLE can help if they need to pay attention to several teachers um, requirements and VLEs and emails, they will get lost and they won't be able to put, perform well. But a sense of learner autonomy is key to, to do this very well. So again, I'm just gonna list the, uh, the tips. Most of them revolve around the same idea that we're basically planning for an online lesson that has a couple of face-to-face -face students. Um, and if we do these things, we can then have uh, a productive um, environment and a productive lesson. 
And I think I actually finished earlier than I was planning to. Um, sorry about that, but I'm just going to stop the share. Yeah.